This is how the average workday starts for commuters in Mumbai. Running and pushing to get onto one of the overcrowded trains that bring people from the northern part of the city to the southern business districts. It is already 11 o'clock in the morning and the rush hour has passed, but it is still almost impossible to get a seat. Some could not even push their way in and hold on to the outside of the train. In Mumbai, population pressure is not an abstract concept. It is something you can feel every day. And it is more than a nuisance. There are no realistic alternatives. Sometimes the train ride is so dangerous that for some passengers, it is a nightmare come true. Balishwar Mishra risked his own life to save a young female passenger. The girl fell off the train near that signal. I saw that and jumped off the train. I picked her up and she was badly injured and bleeding. I carried her up to the highway and tried to stop a vehicle, but no one stopped. Finally, a three-wheeler truck did. I pleaded with him and said she is my sister and I need to rush her to the hospital. Otherwise, anything can happen to her. Balishwar Mishra, who lives in the suburb of Mumbai, has become a hero in the local newspapers. But similar incidents with passengers falling off the train happen all the time. However, things are changing. Mumbai has embarked on one of the most ambitious projects in the world to improve the traffic on rails and roads. The Mumbai Urban Transport Project, also known as MUTP, is designed to deal with an ever-growing city. See, as you can see, Mumbai is not a metropolis, it's a megalopolis. It's a huge uh, city consisting of more than about 12 to 14 million uh, people. And it is a linear city, as you can see, this is a bay, this is the Arabian Sea here, the back bay we call it and it's an island city. So there is no scope for expanding the roads or widening the roads, it's delimited. And all the three sides, it's covered by the sea, as you can see, the Arabian Sea, on all three sides. And the trains and the roads come, uh, they are facing north-south. There is no east-west expansion, right? So that is a geographical limitation. Number two, most of the people traffic by local trains. And about, uh, it is documented that about 10 to 12 people die every day in local train accident, related accidents. So it is a huge price to pay uh, for a, a government. It's a highly unacceptable in a democratic society like India. So it is necessary to have a multimodal project like MUTP to relieve the common man uh, from this day-to-day -day danger yeah, to their lives. Mumbai, the gateway to India, a world center for business, technology, and film, is India's city of glamour and promise. People move in from the countryside at a rate of 500 families a day. The traffic on the city's roads mirrors the conditions in the trains. Mumbai's $1 billion urban transport project, which has received financing and expertise from the World Bank, set out to tackle the city's traffic problem on all levels, by improving the road system, by introducing new buses, and by modernizing and speeding up the train system. But this is easier said than done. Over decades, slums have grown on public land. Some are so close to the rail tracks that people walking on the rails slow down train traffic. The only remedy to this situation is clearing public land and moving people into new dwellings. In order to make the new traffic concept happen, entire neighborhoods and communities with their shops and traditions had to be moved into newly built quarters, clearing the way for Mumbai's future. The very size of rehabilitation involved, about 20,000 families had to be just re relocated. It comes to about 100,000 people to be relocated to uh, to be first shifted, then uh, uh, construct the tenements, 20,000, nearly 20,000, 
and then rehabilitated them in a democratic and peaceful manner with the help of civil society was indeed a big challenge and I am happy to say that it has been largely overcome and the task is nearly complete. A giant task. The relocation program moved families not only out of the way of railway lines, but also out of the path of two new east-west connection roads. Thousands were relocated for this road, the yugeshwari vikroli link road, that has seen its usage more than double since it was finished. Others who lived or still live along the Santa Cruz east-west connection, which is still under construction, have followed in their path. A task that required intense negotiations and meaningful incentives for those affected. Milan Dave, a technical consultant, has dealt with many families and businesses that have been affected by the project. We're dealing with people who have lived here for generations, have built their homes around it. On paper, they are illegal, they are encroachers. But when we go out and build a new infrastructure, when you're building a new country, a new community, we have to take these situations and concerns into mind. Living conditions in this slum are tough. This family lives in one room without running water. We have a little kitchen here. This is their home. A little bath area. And they probably have a common toilet, right? What do you want a toilet? Okay, there's a, and there's a, there's a common toilet elsewhere. The new neighborhood built for these slum dwellers consists of highly desirable apartments. There is water and electricity, and most important, the government conveys the legal ownership to the occupants, turning slum residents into property owners. There, today if you see, the, the buildings may not look uh, like Taj Mahal's, but definitely, what as compared to their previous uh, tenements, what they had, today definitely they are much superior. In fact, uh, the where I stay or my, most of my colleagues stay, they, they may be bigger, but similar structures. Angelo Anant Pavar, who was moved with her husband and son from a slum into this apartment, shows us around. Before, we only had a table. Now we have a real kitchen, a fridge, and a washing machine. Before, we only had a small bathroom. Now there is a big one. There is a water tank upstairs. In the past, I had to carry the water on my head. Now we have running water 24 hours a day. We even have a toilet in the house. Now the school is also close by, the railway station and the market too. I have everything I need and we got space. Plus, there is space for a little altar, because religion is an ever-present part of life in India. And as it turns out, resettling families is a complicated task. It wouldn't work without taking care of the local culture and respecting their religion. Some of the success stories of the projects are things like having to be successfully having more religious structures. If you look behind me right here someplace, uh, is where the trucks are parked right now. But about six years ago when we came here, there was a mosque right there. And now we've been able to successfully move it. This mosque is only one of 23 places of worship that had and have to be moved in order to build an east-west highway in Mumbai a time-consuming negotiation process centered on a variety of religious sensitivities and the need for consensus. After long consultations, many reassurances, and the promise of getting a new and larger building, this community agreed to move. And very important point is post-rehabilitation. That is, once having established themselves there, you have to create a social life for them there, right? Just doing brick and mortar doesn't help, that is not the end of rehabilitation. So we undertook and still undertaking a lot of things for their uh, improving the quality of life there. We, are, we have started a livelihoods program. First of all, 
schools were established within the new housing complexes, avoiding long commutes for children and accompanying parents. Women are part of a jobs program that has them operate the canteen of the government entity that is in charge of Mumbai's urban transport project. The canteen has become so popular that the women have hired a number of men to help them. Instead of carrying water into the slums, the women have turned into successful entrepreneurs. Marsha Song Savant is one of them. We were staying in Bandup, close to the railway tracks, and were then relocated. We had a lot of problems with the water there. Now we were given a house, and they have helped us to form a women's cooperative. We found jobs by running the canteen and food stalls. These days, things are going better for us. In part because the new livelihood comes also with responsibilities and privileges that, in the past, seemed out of reach. The status of the women's group that traditionally had helped to mediate conflicts has been elevated with the size of the settlement. For Hina Panvar, who has joined the group, her official police-issued ID symbolizes more than just authority. We are getting respect, and that's a big thing. We can proudly talk about that. In the past, when we were living on the tracks, we would scurry inside our huts if we would see the police wielding their sticks. We were so scared of them. Today, we sit with senior police officers and drink tea. We feel so proud of that. With Mumbai's urban transport project, the city is looking into the future, preparing itself not for the next five years, but for what is to come in 30, 40 years, when slums could be the past and a modern traffic infrastructure the future. Mumbai's former additional municipal commissioner introduced modern traffic management that has quietly improved congestion on Mumbai's roads. Mumbai, uh, Mumbai city uh, basically is going through a transition phase where major infrastructural projects are being implemented and anything being fitted in the road tomorrow may not be there because some flyovers will come up or some metro or monorail route will be there. So uh, those sensors which are going to be fitted beneath the road may get disturbed. So we switch to the uh, camera mode. Cameras detect the intensity of the traffic and feed the data into computers. This allows for real-time adjustments of traffic signals to create an efficient traffic flow. Trouble spots can be tackled directly from the control center. Uh, we can direct uh, the uh, junction, local man sitting on the junction, who are standing on the junction. Broken down vehicles or potential security risks can be addressed within seconds. asking them to move. See, this is traffic cop. With the first phases of Mumbai's urban transport project being accomplished, it is not just the traffic at Haji Ali, one of Mumbai's busiest intersections, that is improved. Over 600 eco-friendly buses provide additional transportation capacity. Next station, Baikala. Commuters are more and more likely to board modern trains. These trains running on cleared tracks run faster, come more frequently, and offer people more space. Automatic door systems will provide additional safety for passengers in the future. Changes that are being noticed. So definitely people are more popularly accommodated in one train at a time and they can reach their destination more faster than earlier. The transportation in Bombay is getting better day by day, no doubt. Uh, like uh, new projects are going on to move out of the traffic and all of that. So it's going better day by day. Previously, the train used to come every 10 minutes. Now it comes every three to five minutes. There are less fights in the new trains and more space. It's much more peaceful. It's getting better. Even they are making effort to improve it like adding more coaches per train and they're trying their level best, but Bombay is a problematic place, population is concerned. Mumbai's urban transport project is still in full swing, but there is no doubt, the city is catching up with its challenges. <laughs> <laughs>